Ramarai Selvi is working as a professor in the Department of Computer Technology, MIT campus of Anna University, Chennai. She has over 30 years of teaching experience. Grid computing, cloud computing and e-learning are her areas of interest. She has successfully completed 12 research projects funded by Government of India and Tamil Nadu State Government. She has established Center for Advanced Computing Research and Education and acquired one patent and has filed for three more patents in her research area. She has presented over 110 papers in international conferences and published 45 papers in international journals. She has authored five books. The latest book is titled Mastering Cloud Computing, published by Morgan Goffman Publishers 2013. Welcome back to the UGC lecture series on computer science on the topic of cloud computing. When you consider the characteristics of distributed system, you are having heterogeneity. It is not possible to dictate the users only to use the particular hardware or particular software. Definitely in the distributed system, you may be having Windows operating system. The other user may be having Mac operating system and another user may be having Unix operating system. And even in Unix, you are having different flavors such as Fedora, Scientific Linux, like that we are having different varieties of Unix versions. Then that is the heterogeneity of the distributed system. Second one is openness. Since we are trying to connect all the systems together, openness is also another important thing. Anybody can connect to the system. So, we are having lot of open source software which assists in developing lot of uh, applications. Then scalability. Since we use many resources which are available in the distributed manner, we are having the scalability. Scalability means it is possible to increase the number of users. See in the websites or in the internet, you will be using mails. At that time, millions of users are using the mail. So, the mail services must be able to scalable instead of 1 million users. If you want to increase uh, the same capacity to 2 million users, then the system should be scalable. That is what we mean that scalability. Then transparency. In the context of networking, the transparency means you do not know what is happening inside. There are so many network protocols available, so many algorithms available for routing the messages and so many technologies used for programming aspects. But as far as the user is concerned, nothing is visible. Simply they will make use of the interfaces and they will submit the input data and they will be getting the output. So, the transparency is maintained in the distributed system. Then next one is concurrency. When you consider the concurrency, simultaneously you can do many tasks because you are having enormous resources. The task is distributed in so many resources. So, at a time you can do multiple tasks that is called as concurrency. Then continuous availability. You are able to get the resources for 24 hours because the distributed systems in one place it may be daytime, in another place it will be a night time throughout the globe. So, it is possible to make use of the manpowers for 24 hours and the availability of the resources in case of distributed system is plenty. That is why we call it as continuous availability. Sometimes we call it as high level availability also, high availability also. And we are having independent failures. See, sometimes in the distributed environment, if one system is failed due to some error in that particular part, we need not bother. We can switch over to some other resource which is available in some other place and we are not having any failure in case of distributed systems. So, these are the characteristics or these are the advantages of the distributed systems. Then we are having issues also by having distributed systems. First one is you should know what is the architecture used for accessing when you share with so many resources. Then we are having the synchronization, naming, then sharing memory and file system, security, transaction and scalability. These are all the various issues 
which we have to discuss further. Now, let us come to the next topic called software architecture. See, this is another foundation required for learning cloud computing. When you think of this software architecture, first of all you should know what is software architecture. Many of you may not be knowing what is the meaning of software architecture. We are talking about hardware architecture, like that we are also having software architecture. So, we should learn what is software architecture first and then we should know what are the various software architectural styles available and also what is the solution architecture used in our daily applications. So, when you consider the software architecture before going for the architectural styles, let me explain what is software development. Whenever you want to go for developing any type of applications, first we should know the development activities or the various phases in the software development life cycle. We can define it by using 5 D's. Each D is representing separate terminologies. See, first D that is meant for defining the software requirement. So, in defined statement, we are having the problem statement defined. Then device, second D stands for device. Device means you are trying to analyze the actual problem and we are trying to find out different solutions for it. So, the analysis part is the device part. Third D is meant for design, designing the software. So, you should decide what is the actual architecture you are using for designing that particular analysis you have made. Then next one is developing. The development of the software is nothing but implementing the architecture already we have designed. Then the fifth D is deploy. When you want to deploy, you should install the developed software and also you have test the same. So, totally we are having 5 Ds define, device, design, develop and deploy. These are the 5 stages of developing any software. Now, coming to software architecture, you should know what is the role of the software architecture. If you refer to this diagram, this is ba based on David Garland who is the contributor for this software architecture. Here you are having some requirements and it is essential to implement the same. The software architecture maps the requirements to implementation. In other words, I can say like this, the requirements are defined and you are trying to provide the solution by means of software architecture, so that it is possible to implement the same using computers. So, software architecture is the high level system design and it is providing the system level abstractions. The main advantage is you can reuse the design idioms. So, these are the features of software architecture and when you consider the types of software architecture, you are having enterprise architecture. Enterprise architecture means in the various business applications as well as in the various enterprises, what are the various architectural uh, criteria they are using. Mainly in the industries, they make use of different architectures by considering the investment, human resources, maintenance, etcetera. So, that is about the whole enterprise architecture. Second one is business architecture. When you consider the business architecture, the main concern is about the profit. They want to have minimum investment and maximum profit. So, they have the less investment that is the total cost of the ownership, TCO means total cost of ownership which is the actual investment they are making and they should have the maximum profit, return on investment ROI that should be maximum, TCO should be minimum. So, that is the main purpose of business architecture. The next one is solution architecture. When you consider the solution, you want to solve your problem. So, to get the solution, it is essential to design the architecture, so that it is easier to implement. Then the fourth one is technical architecture. See, when you consider the technical architecture, what are the various technologies you are going to apply, whether you want to solve it using cloud computing or grid computing 
or just you are going to make use of C programming for implementing those things like that what technology you are going to make use of to develop the particular architectural style. Then you are having the infrastructural architecture. When you consider the infrastructural architecture, the actual industry or the organization may possess some hardware as well as software uh, already in the existence. So, we can make use of the available uh, resources, so that you cannot decide your own technology. Whatever hardware is available, whatever software is available based on that, based on the existing infrastructure, the architecture is designed. So, we are having different types of architectures based on the enterprises need, based on the business model, based on the solution we are implementing, based on the technology we are going to use and based on the infrastructure available in the particular organization. And we are concentrating on solution architecture, because we want to develop the software by providing the solution by having the conceptual view, logical view as well as physical view. And we are having IEEE 1471 standard for this software architecture also. Normally, we are having different architectural styles meant for the development of the solution architecture. Here, we are having data oriented architecture. Here, the main concern is about the data flow. Then hierarchical architecture, you can have the two layer architecture or three layer architecture that is the hierarchical architecture. Then you can have the call and return architecture that is you can call a function and the function will return some, uh, some result that is called as call and return architecture. Then interaction process architecture based on the need you will be asking what is needed the input will be given then based on the input the output is also produced that is called as interaction process architecture. Then service oriented architecture that is the main concern we are going to discuss today and next one is space based architecture just uh, some of the applications are available based on the space based architecture, but it is not much popular. So, let us have a short break and we will meet again. Welcome back to this cloud computing lecture series. Since we have discussed about the architecture as well as architectural styles, how to implement that architecture in the computer? For that we need the programming paradigms. So, first we studied about the distributed systems. Whenever you want to implement the distributed system, it is essential to go for the different software architecture. Whenever you discuss about the different architectural styles, then we should know how to implement it. So, for that implementation purpose, we are using the programming languages and we are having different programming paradigms. Paradigm is nothing but a style of programming. When you consider the different paradigms, we have come across different styles. First one is monoliths. Monolith programming means just you are having a sequence of statements simply stated. You do not have any other modules simply you are giving continuous set of instructions, so that the instructions are carried out in the computer. That is called as monoliths or we make use of the monolithic programming such as assembly language program or simply binary language used for implementing certain things. In the olden days we use such things and next we evolved with structured programming. We used C language for structured programming. When you consider the structured programming, it supports many control structures such as for loop, if else statement, switch case like that we are having so many control flow statements. It will be having so many operators supporting for manipulation, it will be supporting so many user defined data types. So, all such things are available in the structured programming. C and Pascal both are examples of structured programming. Then object based. See, we have got so many object oriented programming languages such as C++, Java, C Sharp. So, these are all object oriented programming languages. Then we are using RPC, remote procedure call or remote method invocation. Whenever you want to use the 
software in the distributed environment you must be able to invoke one function which is available in another computer that can be done by using remote procedure call or remote method invocation. Then we developed the component based technology CORBA DCOM these two are the popular component based technologies. The purpose of component based technology is to assemble different components to get the final product. Suppose if you want to get a computer you are getting motherboard, network interface cards, hard disk, SMPS, monitor all those things and you assemble together. So, you are having the standard components and you assemble together. Since we are having the standardization you can purchase the motherboards from different vendors, you can purchase the monitor from different vendors, you can purchase each and every component from different vendors. So, we are having the standardization, you are having the components of the self, you can purchase it and you can assemble it to get the complete product. Like that can we develop software in that way, you purchase one function from one company, another function from another company, like that you purchase different modules of the same application from different companies and if you assemble together you will be getting a final product. But is it possible? Nowadays we are having various uh, companies developing software, but the compatibility or when you want to integrate different components we are facing lot of problem. To solve that issue only component based technology was evolved, DCOM and CORBA that was useful for so many applications, but again there were so many difficulties that is why now we have gone to service based programming. So, when you consider the service based programming we are having the web service concept, the programming paradigm used is web services. So, these are the various programming paradigms developed or evolved over a period of time and when you want to consider the traditional paradigms for distributed computing. As I told to have the various computers connected by the networking you will be having one side client or customer, you will be having another side in which the server is available. So, the client is working in a particular computer that is called as the customer and the server is having lot of applications available. Say for example, if you want to have your mail access, the mail server is available in some other location and you are using your browser. The browser is the client and your web server is the server part. It is possible to link the client and server by having various methodologies. See you can have the socket programming, you can use the socket programming methodology or you can have the remote procedure call to invoke one function available in the server from the client. You can make use of remote method invocation or you can make use of distributed component model DCOM for this one or you can have the common object request broker architecture CORBA for accessing the remote server. So, these are the various programming paradigms evolved over a period of time for the distributed computing. You are having one program available in the client side, another program available in the server side, this program can access this server program that is the conceptual idea in the distributed computing. So, these were the earlier programming paradigms we had used, but now we are trying to make use of service oriented architecture. As we discussed with many architectural styles, service oriented architecture is the latest programming architectural style and in the service oriented architecture there are two ways to implement that architecture. One is XML SOAP based web service implementation and another one is representational state transfer, REST stands for representational state, uh, state transfer restful web services. So, these two are implementation to realize service oriented architecture. See you should not get confused with architecture and programming paradigms. This architecture is meant for just giving the specification or the requirement will be clearly given whereas, the implementation is the actual uh, deployment of that particular program. Say for example, in civil engineering if you want to construct one building, the architect will be giving the design of the building. 
it should have the portico like this, the various rooms should be constructed in this way like that the architecture will give the specification or the requirements of the users. Whereas, it is the responsibility of the civil engineer to construct the building according to the architect design. So, the architecture is different from the implementation. The architect will design the requirement and give the entire diagram of the house, whereas the civil engineer will construct the house. So, architecture is similar to architect's job and the programming is meant for implementing it that is the job of the civil engineer to construct the house. So, you are having the service oriented architecture and the service oriented architecture is realized by means of XML soap based web service or restful web service. So, web service is the terminology used everywhere. Now, what is the meaning of web service? See, a web service is a software system underline it is a software system designed to support interoperable machine to machine interaction over a network. So, you are able to interact over a network across the machines and you are having the interoperability. You are having so many APIs that is application programming interfaces and they are provided as web services. What is the advantage of this web service? See, it overcomes hardware limitation. You need not say that in this hardware, this program will not run. That limitation is overcome by means of web service. Then language limitation, you can develop one software using Java. You can develop another software using C sharp. The C sharp program can access Java program also that is called as language limitation. That language limitation is overcome by means of web services. Then access limitations, you can access from any place to another place. So, the main advantages of the web services are overcoming the hardware limitations, overcoming the language limitations and also overcoming the access limitations. These are the advantages of web services. So, service oriented architecture is realized by means of web services and we are having the web service stack. Here you are having the network in which you are using so many protocols. Normally in the internet we are using the HTTP protocol. Then we are having the messaging that is we pass on the message to give the instruction to the other machine to do the task. So, the SOAP message simple object access protocol, SOAP messages are used. Then you are having the service description. So, you want to access the service. So, service should be described by using web service description language. Then you are having the service publication and discovery. This is nothing but UDDA, universal description, discovery and integration. So, UDDA is meant for service publication and discovery. So, this is the entire protocols used for this web services and this is the actual XML web services implementation. See as we discussed, first of all we should know what is service oriented architecture. In the industries normally we use the three words that is publish, find and bind. Publish find bind. Actual meaning is the service provider publishes the service in the service registry. The service requester or customer will find the job using the service registry. Once the service is identified, then the requester can bind the actual service with the service provider. So, we are having publish find and bind. So, this is the actual service oriented architecture while implementing this service oriented architecture we are having the actual services described by the service provider. So, for the publishing of the services we use web service description language as well as 
universal description, discovery and integration. These two protocols are used for publishing the services. Similarly, to discover the services by the customer, you are using WSDL and UDDI only. Once if you identify the service required, then you can bind it. Binding means invoking the service. So, you are invoking the service from the service provider and for that purpose only we are using SOAP. SOAP protocol is used for simply passing the message to the provider and the response is also obtained from the service provider to the service requester. So, this is the conceptual idea of service oriented architecture. So, to consolidate you are having the publish, find and use services by means of UDDI. Service descriptions are developed by WSDL. Service interactions are completed by SOAP. The data format used is XML, extensible markup language. Of course, the underlying communication is HTTP that is the ubiquitous communication protocol we are using in the internet. So, to summarize, we have discussed about the software architecture and what are the different styles of software architecture we are following in the software development. We have discussed about the various programming paradigms which are normally used and especially we are making use of either object oriented programming or RMI, RPC, component based technology and service based technologies for the development of the distributed systems. And also we discussed about the service oriented architecture which makes use of the publish, find and bind model and we are able to realize the service oriented architecture either by making use of this SOAP based web services or we can make use of RESTful web services. For the purpose of understanding the students may be able to answer the following questions. What is the definition of software architecture? What are the various stages in the software development? Then what is the role of software architecture? What are the various programming paradigms you are familiar with? Which para programming paradigms will be helpful for the development of distributed systems? and what is service oriented architecture, how service oriented architecture may be realized, what is the cloud architecture, mention the different layers in it. So, if you are able to answer the questions, you may be able to revise the concepts which we have discussed in this episode. Thank you.